Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala. Five minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. And may I once again say that if you're a veteran, happy Veterans Day and thank you for your service. I don't ever want anybody who has served us to not realize how much we appreciate that service. And Veterans Day is the, is the uh, official day for us to remind ourselves to thank our veterans for their service. And quite a few things happening around town today uh, that you can participate in, especially at 11 o'clock at the Marion County Veterans Memorial Park. Uh, you can go over there. The, um, the one thing I, I wanted to kind of recall was a story when my, when my nephew was serving in Afghanistan. Um, my, our relationship with Jerry from Jerry's Pawn and Gun was kind of cool because Jerry not only sells lots of cool stuff, but he also makes his own turkey jerky. Mm-hmm. And he gave me a whole load of to- turkey jerky to send to Christopher, my nephew. And and the story I heard was that when it arrived there, it went real quick. It was passed around to everybody over there. So you, you can imagine how wonderful it is uh, to receive a package uh, from home, regardless of whether it's from somebody you know or not. And in fact, at, at the church that I go to, there was a fundraiser that you and I participated in. Uh, it was an auction. Yes. And the whole purpose of that was to raise money just to pay for the postage mm-hmm. uh, to get these things over there. I guess there's no free mail when it comes to trying to get things over to our soldiers. You know who knows a lot about this is our next guest, Ron Cummings. He's the founder and CEO of Amino Genesis, and he's an advocate for supporting our military. He's going to tell us about personalizing our support of the troops that are currently serving. Um, and let's find out about this from Ron Cummings. Good morning, Ron. Hey, good morning. Hello out there in Florida. <laughs> Where are you? Where are you calling from? Southern California. Oh, well, thank you for getting up early to do this. Oh, my pleasure. Um, we have in our community a cu- couple of different organizations that have a high profile as far as getting uh, packages out to the to, to the different troops, etc. Um, but it still sounds like they don't really get much the the troops. So we must. Ha- I mean, and if ev- if we represent every community in America, which I don't know that we do, mm-hmm. um, but it, you would think that they're getting a lot. But I guess they're not really, huh? It's, it's all it's all perspective, huh? You know, that, that is what amazed me is, is, you know, after I started doing this and getting some feedback, I realized how unbelievably under, you know, supported our troops could be at times. And so I said, wow, I, you know, it all starts with individuals. Yeah, and right. it's so wonderful we live in this country. And so I wanted to be someone that would support our troops it, it, the best way that I could. And, and do you support them? In, like, do you actually find a soldier, one soldier, and then couple that one person with one other person who can maybe send some things or how does that work well what i did in this situation is is i found you know uh, through a chance meeting because i you know you see soldiers everywhere and i'm kind of one of those guys that i've decided i want to go up and thank them first thing i want to do and then after talking to him a little bit i realized hey there's something i can do and i used him as my contact point and i said i want you to give me the name and address of, of who i can send a good suit, so it gets to these this group, and so I sort of adopted a special forces group in Afghanistan. Oh wow! And and what did you send it to? Like the leader of that platoon or whatever? I mean, like a, like a sergeant or something? I, I sent it to a name of the soldier that I was given to, and um, actually I didn't really know his rank at the time, but um, and you know I thought, hey, these special forces guys, I mean, they're on the front lines. They're out there every day, risking their lives big time in the harshest environment and what I want to do is be able to supply them with something that could really help them through their day to day life. Can you help me understand how it's actually delivered? Is is the is there actually a mail? I mean does the does yeah. it does it ever get intercepted? Does the stuff ever go maybe to to the wrong people? No, I mean we just uh we were uh, I was given the information on uh, the individual to send it to. I sent it to that individual and you know they got it but the best part was is I never really expected to hear anything, but they were so appreciative that I actually received a certificate of recognition from the Department of the Army, United States of America, and they sent me a uh, American flag that had been flown in a forward battle position 
because they were just so thankful that we were thinking about them. Oh, wow. Now, the, the, the company that you represent, Aminogenesis, it says here that you're a skin care company. Are you, did you send them some of those products, and was there a specific reason to do that? Well, yes, I did, because you know, as, a, as someone who's in the business of taking care of your skin, I realize the harshness of the environment that these soldiers are in. So I wanted, what could I send them? I thought that would actually allow them to help, you know, keep their skin in decent shape while they're over there, you know, fighting for our country. So I sent them a special lotion that um, that I knew they could use. And they were so appreciative because not only was it really effective, but it it didn't interfere with their equipment because it wasn't greasy and all of that. But I knew that, and but I needed to get it to them. And uh, it was amazing. I mean, they talk about not being able to have a bath or a shower for sometimes weeks on end, and what a what a godsend this was for them. And did you send any kind of written messages to them in each of the packages? How did you know what to write without seemingly being redundant? You know, I, I didn't write anything. I mean, I just all I wanted to do was supply the products. So I sent the product. I realized it was going to special forces guys. So there's a level of sort of covertness and secretiveness, mm-hmm. and um, I just wanted them to have the products, and I never expected to hear anything in return. I really did not. Oh, wow. So was it coupled with other things, or did you just send it by itself? Yeah, I, you know what? I just sent that, um, because I knew that would be the, the best thing that I could do to help them, and that's to send them this one item that I knew would be able to help them. And uh, they loved it. They absolutely thought it was like Christmas Day, when they got it, handed it out, and then actually used it. And, and speaking of Christmas Day, I wonder if our conversation about the abundance of supplies that are sent by just average everyday citizens increases at the holiday season, and maybe it's at a lull, and there's, maybe there's a real need later on in the year, like in May or so, you know? I never thought, yeah, actually the funny thing was, is obviously I didn't do this at, at Christmas time, and this actually happened in the middle of the year, and so I sort of adopted a philosophy that, you know what, they, uh, these troops need stuff all the time. And, hey, you know, the sequester and some of the things, the cutbacks have hurt our troops, too. I mean, they don't get any luxuries, believe me. They might get nice equipment, but as far as the luxury of life, uh, things you need to just get through on a personal care basis day to day, you know, they don't get that stuff. So when other organizations say they're packing shoeboxes for our military and they request personal hygiene items, that, that that should be on the top of everyone's list? Well, I kind of do it this way. Um, uh, I say, you know, one for you, one for a soldier. And so when you're out shopping, when people are out and they're at the grocery store, how many times do you see all these personal care items that will say, you know, buy one, get one free, or buy two, get one free? Buy those items, keep the one for yourself, and then stick the other ones in a box that you're going to send to some soldiers that you're going to adopt. And I heard you can't actually send a box. I, th- I heard it has to be more like a bag. Have, is that true? Uh, I did not have that problem. I mean, you know, I sent it just... Uh, so you I, actually I sent, the, sent... You sent the box? Yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, I sent a lot okay. because I had to send a lot of products. Have you, have you ever uh, heard that? And, um, no. no. Yeah. So, so, um, so uh, be, before we go on to other things they need and, and things they don't need, do you... Um, do you have any uh, like information for our listeners if they'd like to adopt a soldier or a platoon? Here's what I do. I'm a, I'm a big believer in taking some personal uh, responsibility in this. Two things I'd say. We all see a soldier from time to time at an airport, at a grocery store, and somewhere. And the first thing is, is, is making contact with that individual and thanking them. can't tell you how many times I've done that, and they so appreciate that they're recognized. Secondly, there's probably nobody in America that doesn't know somebody or a family member or a friend of a family member that's serving or has served. Right. Get a hold of those individuals, ask them who their friends are over there that are still, ser- still serving. Because, you know, not every individual can afford to, you know, maybe help out 100 soldiers, but maybe two soldiers or five soldiers, and, and taking the personal time to make sure it gets exactly to the individuals you want makes a big difference yeah yeah all right we do have a phone call and let's take that call and uh say thank you for waiting good morning happy veterans day you're on the air with ron cummings yeah good afternoon sir uh, i guess still morning good morning sir um the the operation shoebox unit here in in uh in ocala uh they have contact with the uh the company chaplains in many of the uh, overseas units 
and that's who they send the boxes to. And the chaplains then distribute it when when it gets over. Oh, okay, okay. And and are they that's allowed right. to send boxes, Jim? Do you know? Yes, they send them out. Uh, okay. Um, um, they, they they get mailed out of my post office. Uh, you know, we get a uh, uh, couple of times a month. They send a whole um, a pallet load. Hmm, that's um, interesting. And they're marked up to different unit chaplains. Wow. Okay. Now that we know yeah, that, you get Mary Harper right one of these days, and she'll explain it. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate that. Uh, All right. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. I, so I, I don't know where I heard that you had to, that you couldn't use an actual box. So what, what kind of things don't they need? What kind of things should we do? They have enough of? Well, uh, I'm not sure they have enough of anything. I mean, I sat on an airplane with a with a soldier one time, and it was a it was a, it was a lady soldier. She said she went to, she crossed it over into uh, enemy territory with only 21, 21 rounds of ammunition, and, and so I thought that was pretty, um, you know, ill supplied. But yeah, that sure is. But you can't send I, ammunition. I just look at this way: if you're out in the middle of the desert, think about what you'd want. And that makes mm-hmm. it real easy. To go home. Um, rather than trying to think what they don't want. I mean, but stuff that they could carry with them, stuff that's easy for them to use, stuff that's helpful to them in some way, shape, or form. Um, and that's kind of what it is. And that, that can be just almost anything that you use every morning in your bathroom, every, you know, sometime during the day. Um, something you, it seems to be real easy. It's pretty basic human needs that we take for granted every day that, you know, our important fighting men and women don't necessarily have. You know, I don't know if this is still true because of technology changes, but I wonder if the the, the phone card is still desirable. I, I remember that was a campaign for a while, send a phone card. You know, I would think that that would be great because, uh, you know, obviously I think it's the same thing. Uh, phone cards are good. I, You know, I've heard of different people, just just batches of socks. Um, you know, I've heard being sent over. They're light, they're inexpensive. And they don't cost a lot of money to ship, but boy, I tell you what, some nice, clean, uh, fresh socks can do can, can make guys feel <laughs> awful, awfully good. I mean, again, you can't you remember that, it, that that we take for granted all these luxuries, and you talk a soldier that's out on the front line and out on patrol, maybe for days or weeks on end, in really lousy conditions. Pretty much anything they're going to appreciate. So, have you literally made friends with some of the the troops, and and probably will maintain a friendship for years to come? Uh, in my instance, the answer to that would be no, because you know I'm sort of supporting a, uh, a special forces group, and pretty much they remain anonymous. They're a group of American and British soldiers, so the answer to that's no. Oh, okay, and, and but I'm guessing maybe some people have a yes to that one. I, I don't know. I've I'm, I've participated in this as a helper, uh, uh-huh. but I've I've never directly sent something. You know, like I mentioned, Robin and I helped to raise money for the postage and all that, which is usually a a big burden. They, a lot of times they get these boxes filled and then they have the the need for the money to send yeah. them. Well, that's right because again, this is you you know a lot of people think well I'll just drop them off at a local army. PX or something like that, and then there it's the logistics of them getting it over there. So just take take everybody out of the picture, find somebody, adopt somebody, send it directly over there. You know, put the bill for the for the postage and the whole bit. And believe me, the appreciation. You may never hear back from them, but you have to know how appreciated they'll be. And uh, you must be a strong advocate for just correspondence, not over the internet, but people just buying cards and writing notes and then sending them over there. You know what, I think that you're absolutely right. I think that just something physically is so much physical is so much better than something electronic, you know, mm-hmm. sent. I believe that, you know, just the human touch of, hey, I, I'm taking this. Someone over here in the U.S. took the time to send this, whether it's, you know, some product they can use or just a handwritten note of appreciation. I know that means more to them than any, you know, electronic message they can get. And we do have another phone call. Good morning. You're on the air. Hey, uh, good morning, Larry and Robin. It's Mark, uh, Marine Corps veteran calling back. Uh, uh, and I just want to comment that right now, live on CNN, showing the uh, uh, ceremony honoring Veterans Day at Arlington. And I would like to thank the gentleman uh, on the show right now with the uh, care back. I would just remind the listeners uh, not to um, criticize the program in any, in any case world to those who receive any, any um, communication back to the state, 
but that unfortunately sometimes, as Marines would say, the people in the rear with the gear get what really meant for the French to run the front line. And as you know, I know that they've worked on uh, disseminating the stuff fairly uh, that are that are in that aren't isolated outposts uh, and get there, but uh, sometimes they don't. But I would remind the listeners of uh, that no soldiers ever do without the basics, whether it's from a warm meal to a what Marines call an MRE, which is meal ready, meal ready to eat, uh, and or toothbrush. There are some nice things that we civilians get them, but uh, no one, none of our soldiers have ever been without anything for any period of time uh, in these last wars. Uh, and, and I would like to thank anybody that's given their heart through uh, the two box officers. And I thank them for that. I'll just, Okay. Thank you, Mark. A little breaking up just a little bit right there. It, it sounded like what he was saying is that the soldiers who are currently serving have pretty much all the basics they need, but maybe something like some of the, the health care or the toiletry items or like mm-hmm. the skin care products that we were talking about, maybe yeah. that's maybe that's questionable. Did you, did you find anything like that, Ron? Yeah, I mean, I understand what the gentleman is saying, and I don't mean to ever uh, intimate that they, that our soldiers are ill-supplied. I mean, they're supplied with what they need, and that is true. Uh, but sometimes, you know, uh, soldiers, there's more things that you and I take for granted every day that, you know, wouldn't be considered a necessity that sure is nice for them to have, like the ability to, you know, um, use something on their skin that helps every day or something else like that. Does that include, like, lip balm, that kind of thing? Yeah, sure. I mean, all of those things uh, would be good. I mean, you know, for instance, uh, like I know that they might supply some level of uh, sunscreen to the soldiers. Well, I'm going to send them the best stuff that I can possibly send them. I'm going to send them the best of the best, Mm -hmm. not just whatever they happen to have acquired. I want them to have the best. So while they may be supplied with certain things, why wouldn't I want our soldiers to have the very best that, that America can produce so they can do a better job of what they do. Well, and, it's, and it sounds like the man that you spoke to told you exactly what the soldiers he was with would need. Mm-hmm. So that made your choice easy. I mean, as, as far as you, you know, you're not shooting in the dark. You know exactly what kind of things are being that are being asked for. Well, it was, it was kind of funny. It didn't really. It wasn't quite like that. We were talking just in general, and I just it just. It, at first, I was going, well, what can a guy like me do? And then I realized, well, wait a minute. I make, I make stuff that helps people in the harshest environments here. Why shouldn't I send that to them? So it was more of a what can I do is what I decided. This is what I can do, and as opposed to try and – so anybody probably could come up with an idea of what they are capable of doing, and that's what I would just encourage other people to do. What can you do? What can you send? What would be the uh, requirements for the shipment of, of uh, liquids, say like uh, mouthwash, because they're always come in big bottles and it's all liquid, and and uh, that's that presents a problem on airplanes. Are you allowed to ship liquids like that? Uh, yeah, actually, the, the, the part that I sent them came in 8-ounce bottles. Oh. So I sent cases of that. Uh, Ron Cummings is our guest. He's the founder and CEO of Amino Genesis, and he's an advocate for supporting the military on this Veterans Day. Sounds like a, a good idea, and uh, obviously we want to make sure that our uh, men and women serving in the military right now are um, remembered, if nothing else. Just let them know you remember them. Send, send This is a yeah. this this time year everybody jumps onto this, and mm-hmm. maybe we should remind everybody in May and, and in, in August and other months. Uh uh, Ron, do you want to leave us with a, a website or any other information so that maybe we can help you help others? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can go to immunogenesis.com. Uh, you can read about the, uh, you can see the certificate and uh, that we received a, a, a appreciation. I, I consider it the greatest honor my company has ever had to receive that. You can see the flag. Uh, and if somebody, you know, uh, doesn't have an idea, um, just talk to anybody at my company, and we can help you figure out maybe what you could send uh, to help some troops. All right, all right. Uh, aminogenesis.com is, is the, um, the website. And I, I just went there, and I see what you look like. Uh, Ron, thank you so much for being on the air with us today. Hey, thank you. It's appreciated very much. All right. We'll take a little break, and we'll be right back. You're listening to WOCA News Talk 1370, Ocala's source for what's happening in today's hottest up-to-date news and topics. 
Time again for the Silver Springs Lions train show. November 16th and 17th. At the National Guard Armory, 900 Southwest 20th Street in Ocala. Times are 9 to 4 on Saturday, 10 to 3 on Sunday. $4 admission for adults, children 12 and under, free with a paying adult. You bring in a can of food or a non-perishable item, it's a dollar off admission. Come join us for operating train layouts, new and old trains, good food, and just a lot of fun. See you at the show. Now is the time to take advantage of Florida Credit Union CD specials. Our 36-month CD comes in at 1.26% APY. A 24-month is working for you at 1.0% APY. And our 12-month at 0.75% APY. All CD rate specials require $10,000 minimum. With friendly service and rates like these, it's not hard to see why Florida Credit Union has your CD options covered. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. Call 352-237-8222 for more information. Universal Soil Solutions wants to know when the last time you took a good look at your property. Noticed any driveway cracks, stair-step cracks in your block, or even foundation cracks? It may or may not be a sinkhole, but a visual inspection by a trained professional must be performed. Experts in sinkhole remediation, cosmetics, remodeling, and even complete construction development. Universal Soil Solutions provides that inspection for free. To schedule your free property inspection, you must call now. 877-519-2777. That's 877-519-2777. Here are today's headlines from The Source, WOCA. A man who killed and raped a woman is set to be executed. Darius Kimbrough, who has been sitting on death row since 1994, killed and raped Denise Collins, who was found nude, moaning, covered in blood, and barely conscious in her apartment bathroom in October of 1991. The 28-year-old aspiring artist was rushed to a hospital where she died the next day. A neighbor in Collins' Orlando complex told detectives he had seen a man near Collins Collins' apartment near a ladder by the apartment's balcony, and the neighbor later identified Darius Kimbrough, who was 19 years old at the time, as the man from the picture lineup. DNA evidence gathered at the crime scene also matched the DNA from Kimbrough. Kimbrough was charged with first-degree murder, sexual assault, and burglary almost a year later. He was found guilty at his 1994 trial. Kimbrough is scheduled to be executed tomorrow at Florida State Prison in Stark. Lake County teachers have approved a new contract which includes a salary increase if the contract is passed by the Lake County School Board. A new teacher salary would begin at $37,150 and max out at $56,550 with more than 25 years of experience according to a press release from the Lake County Education Association. The salary increases would be implemented for the first time in three years according to the association. The new contract recovers the 2008-2009 step increase and added an additional step for this year. The association reported other contract provisions include incentive payments based on student growth, protection of planning time, and high school teachers' potential for teaching an additional class, according to the report. In January, bargaining for next year's contract will begin in order to be completed before the 2014-2015 school budget is approved. The state might have reached a tipping point on the number of specialty license plates as there has been a noticeable decline in motorists willing to pay the extra fees to let others know their college or sports preferences or that they support the troops, manatees, or even trees. But advocates of Florida's specialty license plates say reducing auto registration fees toward the pre-2009 levels could reinvigorate the program, which helps raise money for a wide range of causes. Susan Goldstein, who lobbies for several associations with special plates, along with the Florida Association of Specialty License Plates, said a 2009 fee increase may explain the decrease in sales of the specialty tags. According to the Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles, the $15 to $25 fee on specialty tags generates about $30 million a year, with about $8.6 million going to state revenue for processing fees and the rest divided among different sponsor organizations. A proposal, which is Senate Bill 156 by Senator Joan Negron, a Republican from Stewart, has already started to advance in the legislature to partially roll back the 2009 registration fee increases, which were enacted to close a budget shortfall. 
And the Florida Department of Transportation has embarked on establishing a bicycle route following the outline of US-1 that runs from Jacksonville to Key West. For 541 miles, bicyclists would be able to meander through scenic and cultural aspects of the corridor, taking in parts of West Palm Beach, Delray Beach, Fort Lauderdale, and Miami. The route will be part of the United States Bicycle Route System, a national network of connected bicycle routes similar to the interstate highway system. It'll be called U.S. Bicycle Route 1, or USBR1 for short, and it's one of four routes that the Florida Department of Transportation plans to establish that eventually will connect to future routes in Georgia and Alabama. Another route, U.S. Bicycle Route 90, also is currently in the works and would stretch from Pensacola to St. Augustine following U.S. 90. And those are the headlines from the source, WOCA 96.3 FM and 1370 AM. Hi, Robin. You look tired. I am. I've been running all over town. Why? Why not drive? I need to get this stupid document notarized. Well, that's easy. You need personal service. Duh. That's what I've been looking for. You need to go see Mark at the Personal Service Center. He can notarize that for you, make copies, fax it wherever, or send it out in the mail. Heck, he can even scan it and email it for you. Really? Where is he at? 2375 Northeast 25th Avenue, on the corner of Northeast 25th Avenue and 24th Street. You can call him at 789-6683. Personal Service Center. Thanks, Larry. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Life jackets save lives. Wear it, Florida. A nice day today for Veterans Day with times of clouds and sun at a high of 78 to 82. Tonight, partly cloudy. Lows ranging from 59 and a few inland spots to 65 along the coast. Tomorrow, intervals of clouds and sun. There may be a shower or two near the coast, the high 77 to 81. On Wednesday, breezy and much cooler with clouds and sun. Even a shower near the coast, the high 64 to 70. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Attention college students and recent grads. Don't miss Workforce Connections Student and Alumni Job Fair on Wednesday, November 13th at the College of Central Florida's Klein Conference Center in Ocala. The free event takes place from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. and includes the opportunity to meet with 30 local employers who want to hire candidates like you. Professional dress and registration are required. Learn more at 1-800-434-JOBS or visit WorkforceConnectionFL.com. Habitat for Humanity of Marion County is a ministry dedicated to improving lives by providing affordable and decent housing. Help them help others by visiting the Habitat for Humanity Ocala Home Store on Northwest 27th Avenue. To schedule a donation, give them a call and they'll come and pick it up. For more information, visit HabitatOcala.org. Habitat for Humanity of Marion County. Building homes, building hope, building community. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, your company supplier of banners, digital decals, yard signs, and magnetic signs. Where you give them approved artwork by noon, the next day by 4 p.m., you pick up your banners, digital decals, yard signs, and magnetic signs. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, 368-2404. That's 368-2404. Don't forget, they do vehicle wraps also. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, 368-2404. Looking for hand-cut steaks or just plain good food made from scratch daily? Then head over to Cody's Original Roadhouse for a fun, casual, family-friendly meal. Plus, don't miss the best happy hour with two-for-one. Everything from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day, including Top Shelf. Unwind and watch your favorite college or pro team on one of our many high-def TVs. 